Hi Chasers! Hey guys! I'm Beatrice. I'm Philip. And together we are the World Chasers. This is the first of a few videos we're going to make about travel planning and today is all about travel insurances. But before we dive into the different insurances, we wanted to tell you that we were not paid to make this video. This is our honest opinion and the information was gathered during our own research. A few basic things about travel insurance. Uh, basically, if you can't afford uh, travel insurance, you can't afford travel. And for us that are doing such a long-term trip, it's not a matter if something goes wrong, it's, it's when. So do your own research and find the insurance that is right for the trip that you're going to do and the activities that you are planning to do as well. Make sure you read the small print because every policy has small traps contained in it. So just to make sure you're aware of those. Although the insurance is there to help you, they're not your best friends. If you start reading insurance policies, there are some uh, uh, difficult words that you might come across. One of them is excess, so that's the amount you need to pay up front. So let's say you go into hospital, if the excess is £50, that's the amount you need to pay, and then if the expenses are above that, the insurer will pay the rest. And the word is premium, so that's the amount you need to pay for the plan you've chosen. And let's say you want to waive the excess, then the premium will be higher or the other way around. So if the excess is higher, normally the premium is lower. Another expression that you come across is personal liability. And this is the cover that the insurance gives you in case of damaging property or, for example, if you have an accident and injured a third person. Another thing that sometimes people don't know about while traveling to Europe is that you should have a European health insurance card, like this one. Otherwise, insurances might not cover medical expenses while you travel to Europe. It's the same thing in Australia where you need to enroll with Medicare, otherwise insurances might not cover you for their medical expenses. Don't rely on the most travel insurance reviews you read online. Uh, most of them are biased through partnerships or they will get a small commission every time you buy an insurance through them. So as we said at the beginning, do your own research. We believe that travel insurance is a very personal subject. It depends on your type of travel and your travel plans. Not everyone wants to hike a volcano or drive a motorcycle. So the insurance that is good for us might not be the best option for use. Therefore, we don't understand how people can just recommend one insurance because not everyone is the same. Right guys, on this video we're going to talk about five insurances that are well known to everybody. We are going to show some information on the screen about each of them, but before we start we wanted to share with you some aspects we believe that are essential in any insurance. Yeah, so every insurance should have a cover for high cost items, they should cover multiple countries in the world, they should have a customer service 24-7 and an emergency line, they should have a minimum of £1 million cover for medical expenses and the same amount for personal liability. They should have a cancellation or trip interruption cover up to £1,000. Repatriation should be included, but this is normally standard as it's actually cheaper to treat you back home than it is in a foreign country. They should have a cover for legal expenses and assistance. This is not essential, but it's a good thing to have. And the last thing, you should be able to buy or extend your coverage while you're already travelling. So, the first issue that we are going to talk about is World Nomads. The values that we are showing on the screen are regarding the Explorer plan. This insurance is very good if you want to do scuba diving or skydiving because it includes a lot of adventures, activities. But the downside is that it can be very expensive and the excess applies. Yeah, they also have an excess for Nepal, so you have to pay uh, 500 quid for an air rescue in Nepal and repatriation and most people don't know that. And the other thing is they do not cover uh, scooter related incidents in most uh, policies and motorbiking is subject to a premium. Right, next one is Yati Insurances. The values that you are seeing on the screen are the comparison of their three plans, Backpacker, Star and Big Travelers. What we like about this insurance is that they have zero excess and no upfront payments. We also like the 24 7 helpline in several languages, including Portuguese. What we don't like about them is that they have low values comparing to other insurance providers. They do not offer cover for rescue at sea or in the desert. And they do not offer personal liability cover on the use of motorcycles in any of their policies. Next one is Safety Wing. As you can see, the values on the screen are quite low. But what we like about this insurance is that they have an easy subscription without limits on travel duration. 
Another thing that we like is that they provide coverage for riding a motorcycle or scooter. What we don't like, or some of the things we don't like, is their excess of $250 per contract, so that's uh, not for each claim, and the fact they do not cover Iran, Cuba and North Korea. Next one is True Traveler. They have three plans, True Value, Traveler and Travel Plus. The values that we are showing on the screen are regarding the Traveler plan. We feel that this is one of the insurance that is most tailored to your own needs. You can just choose the, the, their basic plan and then add, add all the activities you really want to do. The thing is, it gets really expensive when you add all the extras. An excess applies and it cannot be waived in Nepal where it's uh, 750 pounds. The same thing happens uh, with world nomads. The other thing is they don't have third party liability for the use of uh, motorcycles. Last but not least is cover for you. They have three plans, silver, gold and platinum. The values that we are showing you on the screen are regarding the gold plan. What we like about this insurance is that driving motorized vehicles are covered, but there is no liability cover. What we don't like is an excess of £75 and it's only for UK residents. Right guys, we finished the five insurance comparison. We hope that we helped you a little bit understanding each of them. But first, we wanted to leave you some general advice about insurances. Please, please, please get a police report if you are reporting a crime. Your insurance will ask for it. The other thing is you need to prove uh, ownership on every item that is covered in the insurance policy. So just make sure you keep original receipts for all the high cost items with you. And just keep in mind that although uh, insurers pay little amounts for each item, sometimes it's worth paying a little bit more to insure your items properly. That's one less headache for you. And the thing that you can't forget is that if you are under the effect of alcohol or drugs, the insurance will not cover anything that happens with you. Especially if you're involved in an accident. So, before we wrap up this video, we wanted to leave you some key points about insurances. The best advice that we can give you is always buy an insurance when you travel. Yeah, the other thing is the same thing we said at the beginning, just read the small print yourself, do your own research, don't just buy other people's advice online. Your travel insurance needs to be tailored to your own needs, to your own type of travel and plans. The other thing is keep in mind to be patient when making claims. You'll see that the first offer is normally not that good, so try to negotiate and you'll see that the second offer will be a little bit better. I think that's all for today. Bye Chasers! See you next time!